Good evening. Welcome to the Earnings Review, your tidbits into company financials and operational insights. Thank you for joining us as we broadcast from Hampton Studios in Harare, Zimbabwe. I'm Ibn Mabunda, yo money man. On the show, we engage top echelon executives to get you up to speed with first-hand information. We also chat with the most competent analysts on the market just to ensure you are finished with relevant and comprehensive market analysis. Tonight, we focus on Bank ABC, a pan-African financial services provider officially known as the African Banking Corporation Holdings Limited. Now, this is a very unique financial services institution that boasts of a significant footprint on the continent as well as decades of experience on the continent of Africa. Follow me as I take you on a jog through the timeline of the entity just so as you can understand how the entity has come to be. 1956, the first merchant bank was incorporated by the Anglo-American Corporation in the then Rhodesia. Fast forward to the year 2000, three financial institutions in Zimbabwe had merged resulting in the formation of the African Banking Corporation. Before the end of that year, the entity was listed on the Botswana Stock Exchange with a secondary listing on the Zimbabwe Stock Exchange. Fast forward to the year 2003, the entity had expanded its footprint across five SADC countries. 2012, the African Development Corporation acquired a 55% stake in the group. 2013, a game-changing development occurred as Ashish J. Takar, an African entrepreneur alongside Bob Diamond, a former Barclays executive, merged their investment vehicles resulting in the formation of the Atlas Mara. Before the end of 2013, the Atlas Mara was listed on the London Stock Exchange in a $325 million initial public offering. 2014, the Atlas Mara Group acquired the ADC stake in the ABC with a subsequent delisting of the ABC holdings from the BSE as well as the Zimbabwe Stock Exchange. A snapshot at the group, the group has over 1,600 employees and boasts of a presence in seven African countries spread across three significant trading blocks. The group operates in the ECOWAS through the Union Bank of Nigeria. It also has a presence in the EAC through the B. PR, Rwanda's second largest bank. The entity also has a presence in the SADC region wherein it operates through the ABC Holdings wherein it has a presence in five African countries including Zimbabwe as well as Botswana. With an asset base of over 2.6 billion United States dollars, the entity has a market cap of just below 100 million dollars whose share price is currently trading at 56 cents. Well, so much about the group. Let's bring it back to Zimbabwe. The group operates in Zimbabwe through the Bank ABC Holdings Limited, which has three key units. Of course, the Bank ABC, which is the flagship of the group, as well as ABC Asset Management, which manages institutional as well as private portfolios. The group also operates locally through Bank Easy, a microfinance institution. On the cards are some mouth-watering developments, including involvement of the Bank ABC in infrastructure as well as energy projects. Bank ABC is currently playing a leading role in the Sakuva urban renewal project in Mutare. At group level, the Atlas Mara is looking at disposing of five or four of its units on the continent, including Mozambique, Zambia, Rwanda, as well as Tanzania. However, the group intends to retain its operations in Nigeria, Botswana, as well as Zimbabwe. Earlier, we had a chat with the chief executive of Bank ABC, a juggernaut in Zimbabwean banking, Dr. Lance Mambondiani. So don't go anywhere. Good day, Dr. Lance, and thank you for joining us on the Earnings Review. Uh, good morning, good morning, Ivan, and, and good morning to everybody. Uh, thank you for having me. 
Beautiful, beautiful. Um, just to get us started, how are you faring with uh, the COVID-19 conditions? Well, extremely very difficult environment for ev everybody running and operating a business, as you know. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, stronger businesses have always been built during a crisis, and this is no different. So uh, we're doing the best that we can. Awesome. Um, and an optimistic approach necessary in these conditions. Um, Dr. Lance, I want us to touch on um, your 2019 performance, some of the teensy winsies thereof. But at the same time, um, the bank has undergone some key changes over the past two years from management shake up as well as to other key operational changes. What has been the experience thus far? It's been incredible, and um, every business, uh, uh, you know, and I must say, needs to go through a process of renewal if we are to survive, because um, the they, um, environment, as you know, even is fast changing. There's been a, a, a lot of things that have been changing, particularly within the banking sector. And in, and in the world uh, uh, generally, and I don't need to, uh, you know, emphasize the fact that uh, we've all been disrupted by COVID as, as an example. But um, uh, 2019 for us has been a year of transformation. And uh, the uh, mandate we had from the board back in July was to see what what uh, we can do as management to introduce and add a little bit more of a growth impetus into the institution and to return it to uh, what we've always known Bank ABC to be, one of the top performing financial institutions in that country. And th th that is a mandate we were given and it's a mandate that we are set to execute. Fair enough. And now with the bank under your captaincy, what is the strategic focus going forward? Well, we, we've uh, uh, said in a, a number of times that one of the things that we wanted to do was to build fundamentally on our strengths. And those, those strengths of Bank ABC, as you know, traditionally has always been in the way that we've been supporting um, uh, you know, the industry. Um, uh, SMEs uh, through what we call our corporate and investment banking unit, and also um, some of the, the uh, trading that we have done in many instances um, uh, on, um, um, in a, uh, on our global markets and trading uh, our, our position, um, which is um, uh, you know strengthening our balance sheet using our trading capabilities, not only in Zimbabwe, but across the region. So, so we wanted to make sure that we are building first on those strengths and those, those strengths within our GMT area and the strengths that we have within the CIB. Whilst at the same time building uh, um, other stronger businesses, you, you know my, you know me, I'm extremely passionate about digitization and about um, um, introducing new approaches of doing doing things. And, and, and the reason I'm, I'm um, uh, passionate about digitization is because digitization allows us to increase efficiency, save our customers better, and also reach as many more people that, that uh, were pro previously not um, um, able to reach at, at Bank ABC. And that certainly has been our mission in the last um, uh, couple of months. Digitize the institution as quickly and as fast as we can and make sure that we are increasing reach um, to um, a, a new set of customers that probably were not uh, looking at us as an institution of choice. Um, quite a mouth-watering subject, the digitization. I'll need us to come back to it later, but let's get into the details of your 2019 performance. Just in a nutshell, can you shed light of how you fared vis-a-vis um, -vis the challenges that beset the Zimbabwean economy? Um, and, 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 and again, thank you so much. We, we, we really are privileged um, um, that in 2019 we witnessed um, um, some very, very strong performance. As you know, uh, we um, went, went through quite, quite an aggressive uh, uh, process um, uh, um, of, of transformation. And, and that, that process, of course, is something that, that saw us, um, you know, strengthening our balance. I don't want to repeat, um, you know, the numbers to your viewers. The numbers are really a matter of um, a, a public record. But there are a couple of things that, that um, really stood out for me. And I always never say, and I, and I remember doing uh, some of this earnings review with you before, that it's not really about the dollars that matters to me. It's not, it's not um, you know, the, the, uh, the strength in our PAT or in our PBT. It's usually the strength in the number of people that are coming onto our platforms. And, and th th those are some of the things that I believe that are uh, 
key takeaways. But um, if you were to just pull out some of um, uh, the um, uh, performance that we, we, we have seen, we strengthened our balance sheet quite significantly um, by, 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 by a milestone, actually. And also our PAT uh, was up almost 2,000%. Again, testament to some of the things that, that, that we are doing. We strongly capitalized in our liquidity ratio, uh, uh, being um, um, squarely where we want it to be. And um, um, one of the things that I absolutely like to watch is, um, uh, you know, we were prudent in the way that we have been uh, lending and supporting uh, our businesses. And through that prudence, we managed to pull out our uh, MPO ratio uh, from, from a high of 11 to, to about 4% when we closed the financial year. But all in all, we've also witnessed about 87% increase in the number of people who are using our electronic platform. Again, a testament of some of the work that we have done. Uh, uh, and we really uh, are encouraged by some of the progress that we see. Fair enough. Um, let's talk about um, your net interest income, um, which reduced from 190 million in inflation adjusted terms in 2018 to close at 160 in 2019. What influenced that? Um, you, you, know, you know, the, the, the way that we uh, like to support businesses and net interest income, as you know, is a factor of the assets that we are creating within a financial year. Uh, there is no um, uh, doubt that uh, in the, the past year, 2019, was an extremely challenging one, not only for, for Bank ABC, but for a number of financial institutions as well, particularly in inflation adjusted terms. And one of the things that we have seen and what we really wanted to do was to make sure that we are being very prudent in the way that we are extending credit. Or, or, or creating assets on our books. And uh, as part of that prudence, you can see that um, you know, our, uh, our balance sheet got stronger. The amount, of, uh, the amount and the quality of the credit that we extended actually improved significantly. And uh, um, as I've said to you before, that uh, uh, the way that we usually measure the strength of uh, the assets we are creating is actually by the um, um, uh, kind of uh, um, you know, uh, defaults we're seeing on some of the loans that we have extended. So, so an MPL ratio is usually a, a, a something that is important to us as a measure of the efficiency of uh, the assets we are creating. So you might see it as a contraction. We see it as prudence. We also see it as um, being a responsible lender because in an environment in which you know that people are struggling, you don't want to uh, um, increase the assets that you create and force people into default. So, so uh, it's not necessarily a slowdown as far as we are concerned. I think it's just uh, really our intention that we want to continue to support small businesses. We have good, vibrant ideas that we believe that are key and important in supporting the economic growth of this country. And, and um, I, I can tell you that we have participated in selected projects that we believe that are key uh, to the economic revival of the country. And this is where we are passionate because we believe that the role of a bank is to support those projects that stimulate economic growth. And now that you just mentioned the NPL uh, matrix there, which has narrowed from 11% and now you're selling at, at 4%, what drove such a positive drive? Uh, um, again, just, just in summary, some of the things that, that I mentioned earlier, it's really just being uh, uh, prudent in the assets that we created. Uh, uh, it, it, it's a measure that we've struggled with, not only as, a, as an institution, but as a country. As you know, that uh, in, a, in, a, in a contracting economy, the challenges of people repaying some of the facilities extended to them uh, becomes impaired. So, so the, 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 the quality of the assets that you book then becomes significantly important. And um, uh, uh, credit to the CIB team really for um, having a watchful eye on um, the, the, the kind of um, um, clients that we have um, been in partnership with. And uh, for us, we consider this really, really as a partnership. And what we would like to do is that whatever business we support, uh, with credit, we want to uh, be a part of their growth story and really uh, to ensure that we are holding their hand in providing them not only with the liquidity or the financial resources that they require, but the expertise that um, um, uh, you know allows them to manage those resources more efficiently and also more prudently uh, so as to reduce the risk of default. So, so for us, it's a complete partnership. Uh, we, 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 we don't believe in um, writing checks to businesses and let, letting them do um, go on by themselves. We believe that when we um, are supporting a business through asset creation, we are actually in partnership. And, and uh, we, we, we like being um, available to provide advice uh, uh, throughout the growth uh, journey of some of our customers. 
um, still on the very same subject, your loans and advances to the agri sector are nearly 50% of the aggregate figure. How bankable are your clients given um, the climatic changes that threaten the sector? That's a good point, but um, Zimbabwean, as you know, going back many, many uh, um, years, is an agrarian society. We can't run away from that. And, uh, you know, the support of the agricultural sector is something that we believe that is directly uh, uh, linked to, um, you know, economic growth and also poverty alleviation in the, in the, in, in the, in, in the whole country. In fact, uh, uh, you know that uh, uh, many of our parents, many of our small businesses are in the agricultural sector, whether in primary uh, agriculture or in the value chain. Uh, so, so we're very, very passionate about um, supporting the agricultural sector. We believe that it remains the future of this country. Uh, mechanized, of course, and done right, we believe that, um, uh, that there is great and immense potential within the agricultural sector. So we've been supporting quite a number of um, uh, our farmers. Uh, as you know, I've been on record uh, um, about some of the work that we are doing with Chirezi uh, sugarcane farmers in uh, the lower field. We're supporting, you know, uh, um, exporting farmers who are doing incredible things uh, in Tegutu, ex exporting, uh, uh, you know, blueberries. We also, in partnership with, uh, you know, um, a few tobacco farmers and merchants, uh, because of the criticality of um, um, foreign currency and incapacity. So, so it, it's an area we've been doing uh, um, uh, well in for a number of years, and it's an area that we believe that we are playing our role to supplement some of the work that um, um, is already being uh, put in by the government and by the central bank, which is to support this sector because it is critical uh, to the revival of the Zimbabwe economy. Um, s s sounds robust. But let's talk about um, your liquidity ratio. You closed the year with a liquidity ratio of about 140%. How are you adding value to these excess funds, so to say? Yeah. You could consider them excess funds, but uh, uh, in a fast mutating environment such as this, you you need to make sure that you are uh, you have the capacity of uh, you know paying back your customers and your clients in the event that they're calling on you for for for, for their for their resources. We were certainly not uh, um, any different in that we want to try the best that we can to remain a very very strong institution. It's one thing having a, a, a good results; it's another being being a strong and stable financial institution. And we certainly have been, uh, um, you know, uh, building some, you know, you know for, for lack of a better word, I would say a war chest in that we want to improve our balance sheet size and our balance sheet strength. We also want to, to, to make sure that we're improving on our liquidity position and on our capital position as well. If you, if you look at um, um, uh, some of the capital position that we published, we came out really, really strong as well in as far as, uh, you know, our, our our capability and capacity to to meet some of the requirements that have been um, set by the central bank on um, a 15 million capital requirement. Uh, so, so again, uh, on those core fundamentals, it's um, an area that we believe that we are strong. It's an area we are continuing to watch because we know that confidence in um, uh, um, our institution comes from the strength of our balance sheet, the strength of our capital, and also um, the strength of our liquidity position. Um, now that you mentioned um, the minimum requirements by the central bank, how far are you in terms of meeting the $30 million uh, minimum cap for Taiwan banks? Oh, we're very, very confident um, uh, that we will be able to meet it without without any problem and also without any uh, 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 call on um, some of those stakeholders who support us. Uh, um, uh, based on our uh, um, uh, current capabilities and earning capacity, uh, we, we believe that we will be in a position in which we can, um, um, you know, uh, match the uh, capital requirements by the um, end of this financial year. Fair enough. Um, and to sort of take you back to the financials, your retail and business banking client base grew by 87%. Um, in the same vein, um, there is also a 47% increase in terms of your banking commissions um, in 2019, which pretty much defies uh, the market trends. What drove such a narrative? Uh, the, the, the most the most important thing for us um, uh, really has always been to strengthen our, um, our retail banking capabilities. As you know, like I said um, um, in the beginning of the interview, we've uh, uh, traditionally been very, very strong in GMT. We've also traditionally been very, very strong in our CIB uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, departments. But one of the things that we wanted to do was to complement that strength by building a strong uh, retail chain that is efficient, 
that's not necessarily driven by the by by the branch, but that is um, driven by you know some of the digital platforms that we are currently in the process of um, building up as we speak. That is actually what accounts for the eight seven percent growth in our retail um, uh, our customers. And, and you know we, we don't take this lightly in a market in which um, uh, we see others are shrinking or um, other businesses um, are struggling for us to have um, um, such a significant um, uh, jump or a number of customers that are, are trusting in the services that we offer and um, choosing to do business with us is something that is uh, uh, incredibly special to, uh, to all of us. So I'd like to pay tribute to uh, all those customers that um, I have chosen to make us their, their, their bank of choice. Um, it's, it's not because uh, um, of anything, it's just because of, of uh, the trust and confidence that that they have shown in us as an institution, which has resulted in that growth. Um, also on the digital front, you undertook a project to revamp your core banking system. Um, would you want to give us an update in terms of how that is actually playing out? This has always been work in progress. Uh, um, uh, you uh, uh, will know that um, uh, when you're growing your, uh, um, your your asset book, when you're also growing your retail infrastructure, one of the most important things that you need to do is to equally and proportionately grow the um, uh, kind of support that you're going to give into that infrastructure use and uh, based on the technological capabilities that we have. So, so we're very mindful of that as well, and uh, we're doing the best that we can. Uh, to, to build and uh, provide the technological uh, platform that can support the growth that we are seeing and that we are also expecting. Uh, um, and, and the projects like this, as you know, are, are never easy. Uh, there are always going to be hiccups, but I can tell you that what we're doing right now is to build for the future. And we are extremely excited about the platform uh, that we're building so far. And um, of course, at, at this very point, it would also be uh, necessary for us uh, to discuss how the pandemic has um, affected your business in terms of volumes and, and, and things of such uh, nature. So in a nutshell, can you just give us an update of how you have navigated this turbulence? It's been an extremely challenging uh, um, uh, time, and, and that that is um, challenging for everybody. Uh, so, and, and um, uh, Bank ABC is not not immune to it all. But I, I think globally, we have seen uh, businesses struggle, banks struggle. We've seen um, you know uh, currency markets tanking. Uh, we we also know, know that um, uh, you know the the, the um, uh, prediction in as far as uh, uh, um, uh, the economy uh, economic growth is concerned. Uh, in fact. Uh, uh, Almost all countries are predicting that there will be a recession. Um, the Southern African market, um, on its own, is expected to contract by about 3.4 percent in this financial year. So, so we we are uh, uh, in uh, squarely in in the same position. But I can tell you one of the things that we like to do is always uh, uh, to look at a crisis as an opportunity that we can still grow. And um, I. I uh, um, uh, fundamentally believe in that uh, uh, um, ethos that you should never waste a good crisis. So yes, we are in a crisis, but we've also been looking at what we can do to support those stakeholders and some of our partners and some of our clients who are actually actively involved in uh, uh, in in, uh, um, in this area in, in um, various um, uh, in, in various uh, positions really. So uh, um, yes, we have um, uh, taken uh, a, a bit of uh, um, a knock just like everybody else, just like every other industry and other business and other financial institution in Zimbabwe and worldwide. But um, uh, I can tell you that we have built in strong resilience uh, uh, for us to be a, a growing concern. And uh, we, we believe that when this uh, crisis is over, we will actually be stronger for it. And of course, your corporate and investment banking unit, alongside the business banking units, have recently embarked on a uh, participation in infrastructure and energy related projects. How is that um, going? Uh, um, I, I, again, an area that we are extremely passionate about, uh, um, as I've said to you. So one of the things that we really want to, uh, uh, you know, to do is to make sure that whatever projects that we are participating with, they are largely of uh, national significance. Okay, so so saying that uh, uh, we like to make sure that these projects are of national significance, and it's important that um, uh, we we continuously building on some of the things that we're doing already. So uh, um, you know, uh, um, uh, we we've um, already been participating in quite a number of uh, uh, projects um, that are ongoing right now. I can't mention all of them by name, but we've we've done quite quite uh, a bit of work within the energy space. 
um, um, assisting projects that I believe are of national significance and um, um, uh, projects that have capacity of uh, uh, supporting real growth. This is where we are passionate about, and and um, uh, we, we we're extremely excited about um, uh, some of the projects that we are currently working on at the moment. F fair enough. Now to sort of um, zoom out of um, your um, operations here in Zimbabwe, Atlas Mara, the group is looking to dispose of its units um, in Mozambique, Zambia, Tanzania. Um, and of course, interest has been expressed in terms of retaining Nigeria, Botswana, as well as Zimbabwe. Um, given the market vagaries that are playing out in Zimbabwe, um, how stable is the group's position in as far as retaining Zimbabwean operations um, is concerned? Uh, a fairly good and complicated question, but um, uh, uh, as you know, uh, this matter is in the public domain. We have done the best that we can to advise, um, uh, you know, uh, our stakeholders um, everywhere of the process that um, is currently being undertaken. Um, I, I can't com comment more but, uh, besides what we've what is we've already put up in the uh, public domain. These matters are very very sensitive, and as you know, discussions and negotiations of this nature at shareholder level always takes a bit of time. Uh, when we have something to report regarding the progress and as far as that transaction is concerned, we will come back to the market and, and advise the market on on, 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 uh, um, on, on where we are. But um, uh, suffice to say, any shareholder anywhere in any market uh, will always make um, an assessment of um, their investment at any given point and uh, uh, making the right call based on what they see. But based on the transactions that we are currently uh, um, undertaking, uh, um, uh, it, 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 this, this of course, is something that, that is um, still a, a, a matter that is under discussion. Um, and as, as I've said before, if there is any further progress on it, we'll come back to the market and um, um, issue an appropriate statement. Fair enough. And of course, being a foreign bank, um, there is a perceived notion that sometimes strategies developed elsewhere and by the time that it cascades to Zimbabwe, it, 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 it seems to uh, lack that element of being in touch with what's on the ground. How do you respond to that? And I, I, would, I would say that it's, um, it's actually the opposite, even because if you look at um, um, a Bank ABC and Atlas Mara family, we are actually a pan African bank and, and we have the strength of borrowing. Uh, from our colleagues in the region and actually having the dexterity as well to do transactions with um, some of our, our, our banking subsidiaries in the in the region. Yes, we are very much um, Pan-African, but we are also extremely local in that um, most, most of the strategies that we, uh, uh, we we implement in this market are actually directed by, um, you know, uh, what we see on the ground. Uh, we, we, we are flexible enough um, to, to borrow from the strength of our international partners whilst acting very, very local in the way that we are operationalizing our strategy. If anything, we borrow uh, from, uh, you know, our huge networks so that we can benefit uh, the local market with some of the experience, the market, to the liquidity and um, um, and also access to um, uh, to uh, you know uh, um, um, all sorts of business opportunities really that exist because we are part of a bigger family. Fair enough. And um, given the volatility that we have in Zimbabwe, we've got an economy that was already um, reeling from a lot of um, local factors. And now that there is the pandemic, how are you mitigating against the risks? posed by um, these set of conditions? Uh, um, and, and again, we did touch on uh, um, how hard um, this entire environment is. I, I, I don't want to undermine um, the fact that we do have COVID, and of course, COVID is a, is a challenge. But one of the most important things that really we've been focusing on is um, preserving human lives. Uh, as we always say that uh, you know, businesses can always be rebuilt in the future. Uh, but uh, uh, you can't replace a, a, a life lost. So yes, we do understand that we have businesses to run. We also understand that uh, we need to um, uh, sustain our going concern. But at the same time, we are also mindful of the fact that uh, um, our first responsibility and my first responsibility as a CEO is to make sure that I protect, uh, 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 you know, uh, I protect my staff. I also protect my customers and I protect my stakeholders. Uh, so, so whilst we are worried about going concern, we are also extremely worried about um, uh, um, the impact of the pandemic itself. That said, uh, you know, uh, um, we, we, we are 
always are going to be looking at mutating of our strategies and our requirements and some of the things that, that we um, uh, we're doing. And we believe that this is um, something that is already um, um, on the ground for us to implement as we speak. Um, then as we wrap up, Dr. Lance, um, any tidbits into your outlook or perhaps what we can expect going forward? I, I, I'm a 20, um, 2020 is already starting up in a way that is uh, um, extremely surprising to all of us, as you know. This is going to be a challenging year. Yes, in Zim, as you know, we already have uh, uh, um, uh, the complication of uh, uh, the fact that we had a contracting economy. So build a contracting economy together with uh, uh, some of the challenges that we've seen in COVID. We believe that uh, it's going to be an extremely challenging year. But uh, like I said to you before, within adversity, all always lies our greatest opportunity. And I'm, I'm extremely hopeful that uh, the COVID environment actually presents us with a very, very unique opportunity to do business differently and to do business in the way that um, I believe all of us have never done before. Because the customers that we are serving, we're going to be serving them digitally. The way we're delivering content is going to be digital, just like we're doing on this in interview. So you know, there are companies that are emerging out of this crisis, like the one where we are doing this um, interview now, Zoom, is valuation is... Uh, um, um, said to be much, much higher than um, that of all the entire American, absolutely, of, of all the, um, you know, uh, American airlines put together. That just tells you that uh, whilst others are looking at the crisis, there's also an opportunity for, um, you know, um, others to build robust, strong businesses that are sustainable for the future. Well, um, thank you so much, Dr. Lance. Um, and as, as you rightly pointed out, um, adversity presenting opportunity um, for great things ahead. Um, it's always a pleasure getting to uh, engage in conversation with you and to find out how you are faring there at Bank ABC. Once again, from the Equity Exit team and I, thank you for joining us and good luck with the ensuing financial season. Thank you for having me. And I, and, and I, I loved it being here. Thank you very much. Thank you and good day. Good day. Bye. That was, of course, Dr. Lance Mambondiani giving us highlights of how the group is actually faring. And now joining me for conversation is our very own analyst. Um, respect, Gwenzi. Respect. Good evening and thank you for joining us on the earnings review. Thank you for having me, Eben, and good evening to you too. Fantastic. Um, I want us to start by looking at two uh, seemingly contrasting um, um, indices where their very performance is concerned. First, sure. um, there is um, a 50% um, um, orientation towards their loans and advances in as far as the agricultural sector is concerned. On the other hand, uh, their uh, client base increased by 87% over the past year. What is your assessment of these very developments? Yeah, I think most fundamentally the environment that uh, we're currently finding ourselves in as Zimbabwe is, is, is quite distortive. When you're looking at the aspect of growth, you really have to discount uh, certain certain aspects like inflation and so forth. So when you want to really measure the real performance of a business in this environment, if it's a if it's a if, it, if it's a producing business or a business which is uh, uh, dealing in goods, you actually have to measure volumes. So I think matrices such as growth in terms of uh, basic interest income and so forth, they might be distortive. You might realize a growth, yes, in terms of the interest income, but also the quality of your loan book in such an environment may also be shrinking. So you really have to be cautious in terms of how you manage that growth. So it's, 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 it's really important for us to really measure the, the size of business growth, that is in terms of the number of customers that you're actually acquiring, especially with regards to non-funded income. But I think looking at their funded income in terms of the loss, it, it really speaks to efficiency in my view. You're actually looking at the risk profile of your, of your book and you're also trying to, to clean those uh, excess, the loans that, that, that may not really be in good shape. So I really think it, it, it might be speaking towards efficiency, especially when looked at in the context of non-performing loans which came down. I realize. Um, but also, I think what would be important to realize at this point is how there's been um, a, a dip where the net interest income is concerned. What, what is your assessment where that very um, unit of performance is concerned? So net interest income is a function of your loan book. 
So when you're growing your loan book, all else being equal, you're supposed to realize a growth in, in net interest income. So we are saying on an inflation adjusted terms, they realized a decrease in the income which they uh, earned from loaning out funds. So why you or what circumstances should there be for a bank to realize a decline in this aggregate? So it speaks to law or, or a loan book which is actually contracting, which is exactly what we realize. So you only trim your loan book if and when you realize that the ability of clients to not pay back their loans is actually growing such that you scale back your loan book. Or you actually dispose of some of these non-performing loans or you actually provide for some or you write off some of these loans. This is what can impact uh, a decline uh, to a non-funded income space. It's very difficult to extend loans in an environment where interest rates are lagging uh, relative to inflation. It's also very difficult to lend in an environment where uh, companies uh, incomes are actually uh, going down. You're looking at the decline in, 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 in actual volumes up to 50, 60 percent in this market. So at the end of the day, companies will have to shrink their cost base. It means cutting out jobs and whatnot. So lending in such an environment is not really uh, something that you, 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 can, you can safely, uh, I mean, just walk over and just say, I'm growing my book and therefore I'm earning such, such. It will come out in the next few years to, to, to then get to appreciate that the banks which were more conservative get to realize higher returns. Why? Because they have got uh, cleaner loan books and so forth. And evidently, so I mean, their non-performing loans ratio has actually actually shrunk from 11% to just about 4%. And it looks like it could actually get better. It might be that. But also... Uh, I think uh, non-performing loans in this market, I mean, uh, given the new standard which came into play early this year, I think, I think uh, provision has to be increased in terms of uh, non-performing loans. I, th I think the bracket, even the bracket of non-performing loans, I think it actually increases uh, given stringent standards which now guides um, lo loans and, I mean, su such earning assets such as loans. So I think... Uh, we might be seeing less than prudent approaches in terms of uh, provision for bad debts as well as even the computation of loans that should be classified as non-performing. But either way, this is quite a, an achievement for the bank. Over the past few years, you would want to know that their NPO ratio was upwards of 20, uh, just like ZB, but they have really come down, uh, they've really brought down that matrix, and so they're really trying to put their house in order, and that's really something worth comment, commenting. Fair enough. Um, now let's talk about um, the group um, Atlas Mara and how they're looking to dispose of four of their units on the continent and intention to retain Nigeria, um, Botswana, as well as Zimbabwe. What is your assessment of that very development and also looking at the fact that um, their disposal of the four units has stalled uh, for a pe pe period longer than expected? This was initiated April of 2019, but up until now, nothing has taken place yet. What is your assessment of that very initiative by the group? I think it really speaks to a risk strategy which comes after a realization that the bank may not really be as competitive as uh, what the founders thought it would be when they sought out to acquire and to, to I mean, to, to create this Pan-African giant of sort at the point which they, they, they set down to, 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 to make that investment. But uh, just looking out at the setup of the units which they've uh, sought out to dispose, it's also a function of what the investor wants to take as well. So it's not outrightly that Zimbabwe has been, I mean, they has been excluded. If you look at how... Uh, Barclays exited Africa. They had to sell some of most of their units minus Egypt and Zimbabwe. But Zimbabwe, it was because there were issues there to do with, uh, I mean, the economics of this country. And that's what uh, made it even an outlier. And looking at Egypt, it was also still facing some of some economic challenges at, at that point. So they, they had to do a first approach of how to exit the, 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 the region and finally they had to let it to uh, FMB of Malawi. So I think in the context of, um, uh, of Atlas Mara, uh, definitely I, I wouldn't say 
it's 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 their it's their choice not to put Zim in the matrix of uh, of disposal. I think given a chance, I would want to believe they 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 would really want to dispose that. But I mean, Zim has got some exciting uh, history with regards to that. That's where the Bank ABC Group started before it went into the region and before it was then sold to to Atlas Mar. And uh, I mean, uh, on the outlook. Uh, this country's potential has not yet been realized and we might see a rebound in the economy. But I think the decision to exclude it from that uh, assets to be disposed, I believe that it was taken uh, not from a, not from the, the seller's perspective, but from pos the possible buyer's prospects. But um, in terms of why it is stored, I wouldn't really have as much detail into what would that mean. But definitely the project... Uh, in terms of what Atlas Mara set out to do, I don't. I think it has really failed, in my own view. Fair enough. And lastly, um, of course, there would be the issue of um, mean, meeting the thirty million dollar minimum capital requirement. But I want you to uh, shed light, not just for Bank ABC, but for the banks across the board. Bearing in mind that recently we had the international lenders, uh, World Bank, IMF, calling for stricter um, uh, measures in as far as the local banks are concerned. Look, we have 16, 15 commercial banks. Um, and, 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 and how does that um, fit in terms of making the pieces of the jigsaw puzzle generate a picture that pushes the Zimbabwean economy forward? Yeah, it's, it's uh, when you look at the initial years of, um, uh, I mean, of the millennium, Zimwa immediately went into a crisis similar to the one that's currently unfolding. And a number of banks fell by the wayside. You could name them, they were up, at least up to five or, I mean, up to five or ten banks there about. Uh, but the underlying position there was, um, uh, obviously, the balance sheet uh, became shaky. So in an environment where you have hyperinflation, uh, there's obviously that uh, risk to say, okay, fine, if one bank fails to perform, the contagion risk might spread to other banks, and then there might really be a crisis for the overall banking sector. And also, there's a lot of uh, uh, interplay in terms of uh, banks diverting funds to some non-core businesses of sort. Uh, and, and, and you realize that uh, this is, these are some of the challenges which banks faced in yesteryear. So I think the call for stricter and tighter uh, monitoring of the banking sector, uh, I, really, I, I really think it's imperative if we are to see stronger banks emerging or if we are to avoid what happened in, in yesteryear. So in the context of capitalization levels, yes, they need to be increased. Uh, I mean, you can no longer maintain a similar monetary value, ZW value, in an environment which is inflationary. When it's converted to US, you find yourself with a with a small with a small amount. So I I I think um, it's 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 imperative for this uh, country to really tighten up and obviously for banks to push towards those those capitalization levels. And I'm quite confident that uh, Bank ABC could meet those uh, those, those um, minimum capital requirements using funds generated within the country. Well, thank you so much, respect for the perspectives. Thank you, viewers, for staying with us. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and to visit our informative website, www.equityaccess.net. From the Equity Access team and I, Danke and ciao.